This is MEC 12 Tires Theory. Some of the dimensions um, that are very important for us to understand is um, the diameter of the wheel, the width of the wheel, and the offset. And so um, the diameter is the outside diameter of the rim. The width is the width of the wheel between the beads, and the offset is confusing. We'll get to that. So you can see on this uh, diagram right here, we've got rim diameter, and that is the distance from where the tire sits inside of the bead from one end to the other. So that's the main thing. If, if someone says we have 15 inch rims or something like that, that's what they're talking about. Rim width is between the bead seats on the rim. So if you were to look at a rim and you could see that distance right there, that's the rim width. And the offset, if we took the rim and we cut it in half all the way down the middle like that, with all this if we cut it all the way down the middle like that and then we connect it we see where we connect to the the wheel to the vehicle this is the offset this little bit difference right in here and it can either be positive offset or negative offset you can see on our wheels here you have to picture that the wheel is cut away and when it's cut away um, we would say that the vehicle is uh, over there. Okay, so this rim would fit this way onto the vehicle. And so you can see that here's the center line and this is where it bolts to it and so th this is negative offset when the wheel sits in when you look at it from the outside. And the other way is positive offset. So our positive offset says our wheel attaches right here to the car and then this is the center line of the rim. Zero offset is it's straight down the middle. A good example of this is a dually truck. In this picture what you'll see is uh, the front wheels. You can see that they, the wheel sticks out. When it sticks out that's positive offset. Positive offset means it sticks out. The back wheels, you can see that they disappear in and they go on the inside. That's negative offset. Now we'll move on to tires. The types of tire construction. We have uh, belted bias ply tires and radial ply. Belt, belted bias ply tires we don't really use anymore. Um, they may be on sometimes uh, some kind of farm equipment, but for the most part we've moved over to the radial ply. A bias ply tire, you can see on this next page, has um, plies that run in this direction. So 90 degree to one another, and then there's other plies that fit in and they sort of sort like, oh, like that. That's belted bias ply. Radial ply has some of those cords also, but it also has a main one that runs at a 90 degree angle to the circumference. So what does that look like? That's this red one all the way across here. It's it's running 90 degrees to the circumference, which would flow that way. So that's a very important. Belted bias tires are, are have better uh, sidewall, that's this area here, um, materials so that they can um, absorb bumps a lot better. Belted bias tires are very rough. Um, it also belted by belted radial tires are excellent for cornering and they're just a better tire in general. So when we look at the side of the tire, there's some numbers there. What do those numbers mean? How does that all work? Well, what you'll see is a number that looks something like this. Sometimes it doesn't have the P or that number ahead of it, but most of the time it does. And it will say P20575R15. What do those things mean? P signifies that it is a passenger tire. You may have some other things like a T as a trailer tire or an LT as light truck, but for the most part, they're passenger tires. Um, the next number, the 205, is the tire width in millimeters. So if we go to our next page, you can see this cutaway of a tire. This is our tire width from here to here. So if you're going to look at that, you'll see that this width, when it is inflated on the, on the wheel to the right amount, that's the width. And they do that in millimeters. So you can see that it's in millimeters right there. 
So on this tire, it would be 205 millimeters across. The next number, the 75, um, has to do with the height to width ratio. And that's more what this picture was about. If we take this height to width ratio, we can see that the height of the, the width of the tire, let's say is 10 inches from here to here. And the height of the tire from the ground to where the tire fits into the rim is 7 inches. And that would give this a 70% of the horizontal dimension. So in our example on this side, we see 75. That means that the height to width, the height of the tire is 75% of the width of the tire. And so sometimes you hear of low profile tires. Well, the lower profile tire, the lower that number is, depending on the width of the tire also. The R, when we talk about the R, we're talking about the type of tire, and that means it's radial construction. So every tire that you buy these, years, these days, automotive, will have an R there. And the last one is the rim diameter. We already talked about the rim diameter, and um, so that's the number, and that's where it signifies right there, 15. What you'll see on this page is a whole bunch of things on the tire that you should be able to identify. I will give you you a project to do where you have to do this on uh, five or six different tires and if you just want to pause it here you can label your diagram. I'm just going to start at the top. We know what this part of the tire says. We just went through that. And then we're going to look right after that. There will be a number and a letter. The number is the load index. In other words, how much weight can be on that tire on the vehicle and the H right here that letter is the speed symbol that indicates how fast you can go with that type of tire sometimes we have this little symbol here mud and snow that's going to tell us about some of the conditions it's good for um, if we if we scoot all the way down to this number here it says DOT and that's has a bunch of numbers and letters that is our US dot tire identification number and that's going to tell us when the tire was made and a bunch of other things like that. Good. We move along. Uh, tire ply construction. It will tell you four ply or two ply. This is down right near the rim. You can see that. You will also have, and, and this one is not on both sides, this, uh, this part right here, tread wear, traction, and temperature. They have a number. Tread wear will have a number. Traction will have a letter, and temperature will have a letter. That's a rating for the tire. How quickly that tire is going to wear out is the tread wear. The traction is how much traction it has. So if you're looking and you're always in mud and snow and ice, then you want a higher letter there. And the temperature, that's the temperature that the, the tire can get to when you're driving along because there's friction between the tire and the road. And so we want to make sure that that temperature is good to match what your vehicle is going to do. Just a few things left here. We've got max pressure, and typically what says it says max load at the max pressure, right in that area, right there. The max load and max pressure. This is how much load, 1350 or something like that, it says right here, at a maximum pressure of 35 PSI. So if you have more load, then you can put more air in up to 35 PSI on this tire. Another thing we can talk about is the tread depth. If we don't have enough um, tread here, then when we're driving down the road, it can't push water out of the way. We can't have good traction so that this area right here of the tread, we want that to make contact with the road at all times. And so if they don't have enough, and we're talking one and a half millimeters, which isn't much, or two thirty seconds of an inch, once we get down to that, then we need to replace the tires. There are several tire replacement conditions that we need to go through and be careful of. Um, you can see on this one, it's fairly obvious. We have a bulge right there. And what has happened is the air has gone past the belt to that outer liner. And so then it balloons out like that. If you ever encounter something like this, you need to stop. And you need to carefully remove the air from the tire through the valve. Because if that blows up, it really packs a wall. So bulges was the first one. The next one is a blister. A blister typically happens when you are 
um, driving around the corner, it's icy, and you slide and hit the curb, and it could damage the rim right here, and it also does damage to the bead and the lining of the tire on the inside. Once it does that, it could turn into a bulge. So we need to make sure that if we see this, that it's taken care of. You can see that it goes all the way out to this this tip of the area right out here. It's damaged out here. So that's a blister. Um, the next tire replacement condition is called wear indicators showing. Um, they're called wear bars. That's what we call them. And if you spin the tire and look every once in a while, you'll see a bar. And that bar stretches all the way across the tire like that. You can't see it unless you look in between the treads. So that's uh, one wear bar that runs all the way across. That's a good indicator if we're down to the wear bars that we need to be replacing our tires. Occasionally we'll have a tire that is uh, has been sitting too long and maybe it's baking in the sun, maybe it's on a trailer or a camper or something like that and it's just getting old and the, the rubber is getting brittle and then you start to see these little cracks in here. As soon as you start to see cracks like that, it's time to replace the tire. It doesn't matter how much tread you have left, it's time to replace the tire because the potential for a blowout is pretty good. All right, ply separation. Ply separation happens on the inside. We can remember that we have plies running like this and running like this, and then we also have the radial plies running across like that. Occasionally, they will split open and you've already watched the video for how the tires are made and so when you see those cords that run across they split open and they will open like this and then what happens is they'll just sort of push that out very often a customer will come in with a complaint of tire shaking and we've got issues like that so um, that's ply separation you can see everything we have here Bulges, blisters, ply separation, sidewall, cracks, wear indicators showing. If there's a puncture, a hole that is larger than a quarter of an inch, you, you need to replace the tire. A patch can't fix that, nor can a plug. Lug nut tightening is a very important thing. We need to make sure we do this correctly. Depending on how many lug nuts you have, let's look at the five lug nut wheel because that's the most common. You always tighten up the lug nuts in a star. So you would start here, number one, you go down, across, always across, never beside. And the reason why you do that is because as you are tightening up, if you tighten this one first and then this one and then this one, you're putting pressure on the tire in this direction, in this direction, and you could potentially, in the steel, create a bubble right there. And that could cause both the wheel and the things underneath the wheel having to do with the brakes to warp. We don't want that warpage and so what we do is we go always across like that and so if it's a if it's a four lug wheel you can do the best you can is you go one two there's no other across you go three and then four across like that sometimes there's eight or more and you will just go across until you get them all done so the next thing we'll look at is wheel balance and first one we'll talk about is static balance if you want to picture a wheel, and I'll just draw it up here, and this wheel, um, static balance says that the weight of the wheel over here needs to be the same as over here, likewise over here. So wherever the diameter is across, it needs to be equal weight all the way around. If you do not have static imbalance, let's say you have a heavier spot right here, every time the tire comes around and circles past, it'll wheel tramp. In other words, it'll almost whack the ground and that causes a shake. We don't want that so that's important. That'll also cause abnormal tire wear because every time that part comes around it'll wear that part out sooner. Dynamic balance is a bit different. Dynamic balance is the equal distribution of weight on either side of the center line. So you can see that in this picture if we look at um, this diagram right here you can see that if we have it heavier on one side than the other side then it's going to shimmy down the road and it will actually just shake side to side just like this diagram shows. It'll move back and forth and it will end up causing this part of the tire and this part of the tire to gouge out. It's called cupping. 